first of all, I do have a bruise on the corner of my head and that is from hitting the cupboard straight in to my forehead. So don't mind that. I don't have any makeup on today, but I do want to give an update video for you. I did not upload on Monday and I want to tell you what has been going on in the last little while that has affected my upload schedule. So I am a human being. <laughs> I do have a life outside of YouTube and as an Etsy shop owner and you know I'm a mother, I'm a wife and I deal with the same things that you watching go through as well too. So that includes you know taking care of my husband, making sure he's okay, you know being there for my kids always no matter what age. Um, but that's what I want to go into with today's video. So first thing is first is Jenna has been going through a little bit of a traumatic experience and it happened actually after I left Banff. So a few days after I had left Banff, um, she had called me in the middle of the night and it was probably about 12, 31 o'clock. And she said, mom, somebody is banging on our door and on my window, like trying to get in. They're not saying anything, but they're really trying to get in. I can hear them trying the doorknob and everything. And she said, what do I, what should I do? Like, is this a big situation that I should call the cops? I said, absolutely. You need to call the police right now. So her, her um, bedroom is actually in the front by her front door and her roommate is kind of in the back. So she ended up going into her roommate's room, waking her up and telling her what is happening. And they called the RCMP. Here in Canada, we have the RCMP and uh, that's who they ended up phoning. And when they had called the RCMP, they said, thank you so much for calling. We've been getting a lot of these phone calls and police are on the scene and investigating it. And so be it. You know, Jenna was kind of texting me throughout the night. I did go back to bed. Of course, I was worried. But, you know, Banff is such there's a lot of 20 year olds that live and work in Banff. So it essentially is a lot of socialization, a lot of going out and things of that nature. And that's what I honestly racked it up to be. I thought they're like her apartment, the, all of the doors look alike. You know, there's probably 30 apartments and I thought somebody was just at the wrong door. And um, she kept on texting me throughout the night, just about four texts saying, you know, yes, the police are here. I can see them outside my window. You know, they are in the area and all of these kind of text messages. She was safe and sound. So the next morning, she went to go to work. She works like a 60, 70 hour a week. She works all of the time and I'm so proud of her for that. But she went to go to work in the morning and she noticed there was blood all along her walkway. Cause how it is, it's kind of like how I explain it is like a motel. That's how their apartment is. It's like about, you know, 10 apartments on each floor. There's three floors, but it's all exposed. As soon as you walk outside of her apartment is the outside and a balcony, right? And she had taken this video that she sent to me and I kind of looked at it and I, I was like, what, what happened? You know, thinking to myself what had happened. And she called me then and she said, mom, she says, I found out, I have the chills. She said, I found out what happened last night. And she was very distraught and very you know, nerve wracking. And I could just tell in her voice, keep in mind, we live in a hamlet. There is like 200 people that live in this hamlet. And this is pretty much where the girls grew up. You know, Jimmy and I got together when the girls were only four and six. And so this is kind of the only area that we know. We are not city people by any means. And she had told me the story of what happened. And of course the details weren't exactly um known 100% at that time but she did have a few rumors and a few ideas on what had happened and unfortunately what had happened was there is a bar that is on Banff Avenue and Jenna lives just kind of I would say a block or two off of Banff Avenue and um there is a bar that's located there and there was an altercation that happened outside of that area and it was a stabbing and um, yeah, the, the, there was two individuals that ended up stabbing um, one individual and then they decided to go on, on the run, you know? And um, 
they went door to door in Jenna's apartment complex and they were knocking on doors on one apartment she was talking to a person a lady that is in um the apartment below her she was with her boyfriend and this the the individual that was trying to you know get into apartments literally was body slamming himself into the door and you know trying to get in breaking screens all of this as as a form of a hideout space is what we think and um you know, so when Jenna recorded that, it all kind of made sense after she found out the story. And um, we didn't know at that time if he was if he was caught, right? So we just thought that he was still kind of running around, whether he got in a car and left town or what have you, but we had no idea. And as the day progressed, she kept me informed. And, you know, she was telling me updates. She was absolutely 100% distraught because this does not happen if you're from a city if you're from a large city whether it be Canada or the US like in Canada like Vancouver Toronto those sort of things happen there 100% but it does not happen in our area whatsoever I'm not saying crime doesn't happen here but this sort of crime like murders stabbings anything like that does not happen in my area and she was very very distraught and she ended up getting sent home actually and you know then we were on facetime pretty much like three four days straight literally you know um she took the next day off from work and then she did go back to work but like she was d absolutely distraught um since then she has reached out um you know for mental health because they the town of Banff was absolutely amazing and they had advertised that they would be opening up centers who was directly involved with this allocation as far as like you know all of the people in that complex they were literally going from door to door to door body slamming like opening up doors like and the the crazy thing is so anyways it was grateful that Banff did that they opened it up to the public as far as reaching out for health health mental health but the most crazy thing is, is when Jenna called me, first of all, that night at 1250, because it logged it on her phone. She called me at 1250. She was contemplating on taking Cove out, which is her dog, to go out to the washroom. And she said, no, I, I just took Cove out like a half hour ago. She'll be fine for the night. And she looked at her clock in the kitchen and it was 1240 and she locked the door at that time. Usually she locks it all the time and I don't know what the story was on why it wasn't locked, you know, as far as maybe she was taking out Cove again before bedtime or what have you. Uh, but she literally looked at the clock and was like, it's 12.40, time to lock up and head to bed. And she called me at 12.50 with this person banging on their door and you know it's very mental like <laughs> of course as a mother if you are a mother watching this you just think of the what ifs i went through a long stage of that when my when jenna turned 16 and she had a car and she had a license and we live you know a half an hour outside of the city and you know i the, uh, the what ifs just play such a huge part as a parent right and oh my gosh i just think of like what if what if her door wasn't locked you know and you you don't really want to express those feelings because of course she's already um distraught and you know going going through all the emotions of that scenario that you don't really want to bring it up and talk about it but it was very very uh chaotic experience something that I've never experienced as a parent or even as a person. I have never experienced that. I am 45. I've never been in that scenario ever. Um, and I think it kind of woke us up to say on how naive we are and how trusting we are as a family because we live in a small, we live like right off the number one highway, which is the major highway that goes from east to west. And we've had people at knock on our door at 2 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m. for gas or a bathroom. <laughs> like we have done things like this. We have 
you know, helped a person, you know, put gas in their vehicle. We have let a stranger into our house to go to the washroom. Like, yes, it's all panned out. And yes, it has all been true. The five times that it's happened in the last 15 years that we've lived here, it doesn't happen all the time. But I feel like it just really goes to show that you really need to be aware. And I'm sure maybe a lot of you are already aware but for me, I grew up in a small town, born and raised. It was 3,000 people, um, and I'm, I'm just not used to it. And therefore, my girls are not used to it as well. So I have ordered both of my girls. There is like kind of this wrist, wristlet, I guess you want to call it. And it has like um, a, an alarm on it, and it has like... Um, like a, a key on it and like just things for self-defense, right? And so I've ordered those for the girls to have with them all the time. Um, and I've always talked about like, you know, sex trafficking and, you know, unlocking your car if you're alone at nighttime, even in the smaller city that we live near and all of those things. I've talked to my girls about them and I, I have like almost, I don't want to say I scared them, but like, it's just the reality of it. You have to, as a parent, you have to enforce that and, and try to get it across on how real that scenario could be because it happens every single day. And um, so I've been dealing with that and it was very, like like I said, I've never experienced anything like that with either of the girls yet as far as, as something traumatic like that. So in conclusion with that story, they actually did arrest both parties that were um, involved with the stabbing and they were arrested and charged for second degree murder. And the victim, um, unfortunately, he was um, 24 years old and he passed away from his injuries. So that was very, very disheartening. And, you know, and now it's just time to move on from there and, you know, do some reflection and some self-defense as well, too, just in case you are approached or in that scenario. I think it's very, very important. And like I said, probably a lot of you that live in the bigger cities are already aware of what to do. And, you know, this whole, whole kind of scenario, maybe it happens in your area, but for us, it has never happened and like I said for myself it's I'm 45 and I've never experienced anything like this so um, it was very encouraging for Jenna to know that the two suspects were arrested they were actually arrested in her area because there was so many, many people calling the RCMP and calling 911 so thank goodness for that as well too so please make sure that you do your due diligence and if you do see something like that you call it in and um, yes, they were arrested and, you know, they are facing uh, second degree murder charges here and they will be put away for a long time. And, you know, our, my thoughts and condolences go out to the victim. Um, you know, it was just, it was under no pretense as far as, as far as we know right now that this incident happened. Um, but yes, our sincere condolences go out to um, his family. So I've been dealing with that <laughs> and um, I have, I did not go back to visit Jenna. Um, she went back to work and she works a lot and um, you know, she has reached out, like I have said, for help and we talk every day. Jenna is my daughter who literally FaceTimes me every single day. So I am, I'm graciously like I, I love that. I love that she does that and um, it's always been like that between her and I. So that has happened and of course you know we're still going with the emotions through that and dealing with that and then you all know that Jimmy has been working a side hustle job and that side hustle job has been a lot of hours. I've mentioned to you he is pushing 70, 80, 90 hours a week every week in his full-time physical job as well as this side hustle job as well. And it's been going great. He's made so much progress on that house. He has pretty much done the upstairs, which includes three big size bedrooms and a bathroom. He has done the painting, the flooring and all of that. So he is making progress. However, on the weekend, he was pulling rug. 
and he was taking out the rug because um, the owner is putting in this new laminate flooring, vinyl flooring. So he's ripping out all of the rug and ripping it all. And you know, he, it was fine. It was a hard work. Like he had said, it was a long days and he was working 10 hour days, both Saturday and Sunday. And um, then Monday came and he came home from work that day and he came home at, at noon and he, I, I don't want to cry, but he literally could not walk. And um, like I'm talking like could not walk, like literally bracing himself with the wall just in case he did like collapse. And it was weird because he was feeling fine on Monday morning when he went to work. So I don't know what had happened. Like he said, with if anybody has, suffers from back pain or um, it, discs problems, you don't really know exactly what happens when that happens. <laughs> it could be just something simple. This is what Jimmy says anyways. I don't have back problems. I'm still dealing with my shoulder issue though. But he could not walk. So he came home and um, he laid in bed and then the next morning he called in sick because he couldn't walk again. He literally could not walk. And um, he was in bed, well today is Tuesday, and he is in bed all day. And he, he does not like it. He does not like that at all. However, he literally cannot walk. And before he had said to me, I was not with him with his first back surgery, but he had mentioned to me that before he had his back surgery the first time is he would collapse. Like he would collapse on the ground, not being able to move, like literally begged people not to help him and just would relax and just would like, you know, literally relax, wiggle his toes, wiggle his fingers, make sure that everything was okay. And then he would eventually get up himself, right? Um, however that may be, you know, everybody with back issues has their own way of getting up on the, by themselves. And like, sometimes if somebody helps you, it just isn't, isn't helpful. <laughs> um, but that hasn't happened this time. And this is probably the closest time that, that that's been close to happening. Um, so I've been dealing with that because it just, it breaks my heart because I know how Jimmy is and I know he loves to work, you guys. He is a worker. It's not even about money at, at, in Jimmy's mind. It is not about money. He loves doing it. It makes him feel accomplished and it makes him feel useful and needed and wanted and all of those things that maybe we get fulfilled with other things. Like for me, it's my YouTube and it's my Etsy and doing my own thing. Everybody has their own their own way to get gratitude for themselves and be happy with what they're doing. And that's that's Jimmy's way. So um, I've been dealing with with those two things primarily. Now, my diet has been I'm, I'll be 100 percent honest is off and on those probably like the, the last three to four days. It's not like, how do I explain it? Like I've been having my, the beef, the beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. I still have been eating that. However, it's included like I've had a sparkling ice. Um, I had some cheese and meat. Like it's been not exactly only B, 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 E, but I've still been on track. And I'm doing my best and I'm okay with that. I'm really, really okay with that. So I think um, I did not do a weigh-in. I had way too much happening mentally and stress-wise to even think about weighing in. I still have not weighed in. Um, I'm gonna wait till this weekend to do that. But I wanted to come on here and give you guys an update and really tell you what has been going on. And this, it's my channel. And I know a lot of you are my friends. You're literally my dearest and closest friends. And we chat every video all of the time. There's people that reach out and, you know, DM me on Instagram and that we've become friends. And I want to be transparent on here, even though this video, I know doesn't have to do with keto. It doesn't have to do with the BBBE or carnivore or ketovore or anything like that. This video is more of a personal video, but I also want to know, I want you to know where I am mentally and where I'm standing. Because I feel like this, 
things happen all the time, right? It's not always, okay, 30 days, this is what's going to happen. And I'm going to be at home for those 30 days. And you know, <laughs> that's just not reality sometimes. And, um, you know, Jimmy and I went on a date night. That was another night that was on Saturday. He had made a reservation and surprised me and we went out for dinner and I did have steak. I ordered the biggest steak. I think it was like a 10 ounce. However, on the side there was mixed vegetables. So I think it was like, it was like a pepper kind of mixture that was sauteed. Um, but that was it. You know what I mean? It's not like I'm really gone off for those four days. But starting again tomorrow, which is Wednesday, when you will be watching this video, let it be known that I will be on track and I will be recording what I'm eating and I will give you a way in this coming weekend as well. But I wanted to give you this update to tell you, um, <laughs> just to tell you what's going on and kind of the stress that I have been having in my life recently because I have not posted on Instagram. Um, I have not, you know, come on YouTube or anything like that. And I was debating if I was going to talk about all of this. I really was. But then I was like, you know what? Why, why wouldn't I? <laughs> it's my channel. It's what has affected my life in the last four days. And I owe that. I owe that to you guys to share all of this information with you. So let it be known. Um, everybody is doing fine and everybody is okay and everybody you know is healthy and you know jimmy's back surgery is coming and i want to i want to let you know that jimmy will not stop what he's doing trust me <laughs> i have tried <laughs> and but the whole thing is is that um with Jimmy, it's a little bit of a different scenario with him because that's what he does to make himself happy. And if he is not able to do that stuff, physical stuff and accomplish something and build something and paint a room and do something physical, then it really affects his mental health. So I please refrain from saying, you know, Jimmy should stop doing this or Jimmy should probably let go of that side hustle job or or some please please don't say that in the comments because he won't. He will not stop doing that. And I have offered, obviously me and Zoe are here to help him and we will help him no matter what. And um, you know, we do we will do what we can do and he has even taken Zoe a few times now to that house. Um, to take out staples out of the floor or to touch up paint or you know to do the things that she can do so he can concentrate on the bigger things that he needs to do but please don't say that in the comments because you know Jimmy is his own person and Jimmy makes his own decisions he is 55 years old he is going for surgery in the new year and he does what makes him happy he does not do it for you know praise or money or anything like that. He honestly does this for his own well-being. So um, just because I know a lot of you are thinking that and why doesn't he just give up this side hustle? Why doesn't he just stop doing it? You know what I said in this in a video a month ago when he started working on this house how he just lit up. <laughs> you know he just lit up and after two days he was so ecstatic to be working a physical job and be working with his hands and be painting and doing all the things that he loves to do. And I'm not going to take that away from him. Jimmy knows his own limits. You know, he, he has experienced this before and who am I to say, you know, you need to stop doing this. I trust, trust me, I have. <laughs> and, um, it, it just doesn't work. Yes. He may cut down or he may, you know, get us to help or what have you but yeah I do my best <laughs> so anyways thank you guys so much and I want to know that I appreciate all of your kind messages and I wanted to give you a little update and I will definitely be returning on Friday with what I eat I'm going to be recording what I eat actually tomorrow so make sure that you tune in on Friday to see that so thank you so much. I love all of you. Please make sure that you give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed as well as the notifications are on. And we will see you in Friday's video.